The Google Pixel 6 series became a darling of the Android market by providing consumers with a flagship level device without the flagship price tag. This year, Google hopes to live up to its reputation with the release of the Pixel 7. But is the Pixel 7 really the follow-up fans have been waiting for? I'm Harley Moran with Android Authority, and in this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Google Pixel 7. Starting with the design, the Pixel 7 features a few improvements over its predecessor. The Pixel 7 retains the same glass sandwich design as last year, with the front and back protected by Gorilla Glass Victus, making the phone a little bit more durable. The camera bar makes an encore with the Pixel 7, although for this iteration, Google has opted for a brushed aluminum housing instead of glass. Not only does this design change help you distinguish the 7 from the 6, but it also makes the camera bar less of a fingerprint magnet. An aluminum frame holds the two glass halves together and feels slightly thicker than the frame on the Pixel 6. Coupled with a flat edge screen, the Pixel 7 feels great in the hand and is arguably easier to hold than the curved edge Pixel 7 Pro. Looking at the front of the device, the Pixel 7 retains a similar 1080p panel to its predecessor, despite the Pixel 7 measuring 0.1 inches smaller. The display also features a refresh rate of up to 90 Hz, same as last year which isn't as buttery smooth as the Pixel 7 Pro's 120Hz panel, but it is still enough to provide a smooth viewing experience when scrolling through the interface. Under the display, you will find a much improved and more reliable fingerprint sensor. Granted, it is not the fastest in-screen sensor we've ever tested, but it is certainly a leg up from the Pixel 6's fingerprint sensor, which was plagued by reliability issues and sluggish response times. Of course, with the Pixel 7, you now have the option to unlock your phone with your face through Face Unlock. From my testing, Face Unlock works pretty fast. However, it is worth noting that it only uses basic imaging rather than 3D depth data, which means that you can't use Face Unlock with banking apps or other secure services. The Pixel 7 is powered by Google's second gen in-house chipset, Tensor G2. And while the word second gen may allude to drastically improved processing performance, that's not really the case with the Pixel 7. If you look at our benchmarks, you can see that the Pixel 7 lags behind the likes of Apple, Asus, Samsung, and OnePlus. However, these numbers don't necessarily tell the whole story. From my experience, the Pixel 7 breezes through daily tasks with no issues. The phone did get a little warm when flipping through apps or watching videos for a long amount of time. However, this occasional heat buildup didn't seem to have an impact on performance. Tensor G2 includes a new graphics processor, which allows for better sustained performance, especially while gaming. In fact, my colleague Robert Triggs was able to play Apex Legends and Call of Duty Mobile at 60 frames per second with the graphics cranked up, which is great for a mid-range processor. Now with the slightly improved processing performance, coupled with the slightly smaller form factor of the Pixel 7, it is easy to assume that all of this will come at the cost of the phone's battery life. Fortunately, that is not the case. Even with a slightly smaller battery compared to last year, the Pixel 7 is able to make it through a day of heavy gaming, web browsing, watching videos, with 15% to spare by bedtime. And depending on how you use your phone, you should expect a day or two's worth of on-screen time. When you need to charge your Pixel 7, be prepared to wait, since the charging speeds of this phone are quite slow. Now sure, you can go from zero to 50% in just 30 minutes, but that isn't really enough battery life to take you through the whole day with enough headroom. That being said, if you're thinking of buying the Pixel 7, you're gonna have to get into the habit of charging every night or at least carrying a charger with you. Before I talk about one of the Pixel 7's best features, I'm gonna first tell you about today's sponsor, CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a streaming and on-demand service where viewers of all ages can fuel their passions and explore new ones. Get access to thousands of top quality documentaries, TV shows, and other nonfiction titles, all for the low price of $19.99 per year. Watch anywhere, anytime, with instant access to award-winning exclusives and original series. With CuriosityStream, you can learn about everything from ancient history to space exploration from the comfort of your own home or while you're on the go. With so many titles to choose from, covering society, technology, nature, science, and lifestyle, you're bound to find whole new subjects to get curious about. Click the link in the description below for a full year of CuriosityStream for less than some people pay every month for other streaming services. 
When we reviewed the Pixel 6 last year, we stated that it had one of the best smartphone camera systems we've ever tested. And I'm happy to say that the mantle has been passed over to the Pixel 7, which continues to impress us with its photo and video capabilities. Like its predecessor, the Pixel 7 sports the same camera hardware, which includes a 50 megapixel main shooter and a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera. Unfortunately, the Pixel 7 does not have a dedicated telephoto camera or macro focus capabilities, as that is reserved for the Pro model. But that doesn't stop the Pixel 7 from producing high quality images. Here are some image samples that the team and I were able to capture using the Pixel 7. As you can see, the Pixel 7 has great dynamic range, good color reproduction, and a good amount of sharpness and detail. Beyond hardware, Google's machine learning algorithms play a key role in creating such clean images. For example, the phone's night sight feature does a great job in retaining image detail with minimal noise in low light conditions. And with Tensor G2, capturing night sight photos is about twice as fast as last year's model. Meanwhile, the company's super res zoom feature allows you to take photos of faraway objects without a dedicated telephoto camera. However, from our testing, we found that you'll want to be careful about pushing the zoom too far, as anything past three times zoom may start to look way too processed and basically unusable. The front facing camera of the Pixel 7 is a slight improvement from the Pixel 6. The images do come across as a little soft, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, since this slight softness helps compensate for the occasional over sharpening via software. Looking at the video side of things, the Pixel 7 can record 4K at 60 frames per second from both rear cameras, and 10-bit HDR 4K at 30 frames per second. However, after shooting with both modes, I felt that you're better off just recording without HDR enabled. Shooting with the HDR mode resulted in really bad highlight roll off, in my opinion, making it appear as if the footage was over sharpened, as you can see by Adam's eyebrows in this footage. The Pixel 7 also introduces cinematic video capabilities, which is very similar to Apple's cinematic mode. It is limited to shooting at 24 frames per second at 1080p, which isn't exactly cinematic. Using the feature, I found that it looked way too artificial for my taste. The software doesn't do enough to smoothly blend the edges of the subject with the background, resulting in the helmet hair effect when shooting people. Also, the camera struggled to keep the background blurry and consistently hunted for focus, which really just does not look good. If you want to shoot video with the Pixel 7, I just recommend sticking with the standard video mode, setting your resolution to 4K, and then just choosing your frame rate according to your preference. The Pixel 7 ships with Android 13 and Google's Pixel UI, which I argue is among the best Android skins out there and is as close to stock Android as you're going to get. There's no unnecessary bloatware to deal with, and Google's Material U design language is great in helping you customize the device to really make it feel like your own. Of course, with a Pixel comes exclusive features that take advantage of the machine learning capabilities of Tensor G2. This includes a handy recorder app with voice transcriptions, call screening to filter out robocalls and scammers, voicemail message transcriptions, hold for me, and a suite of photo processing tools. If you want a full rundown of all the Pixel exclusive features, be sure to read our full article on androidauthority.com. When it comes to updates, the Pixel 7 comes with three years of OS updates and five years of security patches. The Google Pixel 7 starts at 599 US dollars, which comes with eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. You do have the option to bump up that storage to 256 gigs for $100 more if you so desire. At its base price, however, the Pixel 7 is cheaper than both the iPhone 14 and vanilla Samsung Galaxy S22. So the question stands, is the Google Pixel 7 a good phone and should you buy it? Well, first off, yes, the Google Pixel 7 is a good phone, especially at such a competitive price. It features a tried and tested design with some welcome durability improvements, a nice display, decent performance, great software, and one of the best smartphone camera systems around. More importantly, the Pixel 7 fixes a lot of the problems associated with the Pixel 6, featuring a more reliable fingerprint sensor and improved thermal performance. However, it's not perfect. The Pixel 7 is not the fastest phone out there, even with second gen silicon, meaning that it won't be the optimal choice for hardcore mobile gamers. The Pixel 7's charging speed is slower than the competition, which may irk some users. And I'm honestly not sold on the whole cinematic video feature. But none of these gripes are really enough to outweigh the positives that the Pixel 7 brings to the table. 
So if you're looking for a new phone, but don't want to break the bank on an expensive flagship, then the Pixel 7 is guaranteed to give you the best bang for your buck. However, if you are thinking of upgrading from a Pixel 6, I'd advise you to hold off on that, since not much has really changed between the 6 and the 7. But if you can't stand certain issues with the Pixel 6, like unreliable connectivity, or an iffy fingerprint sensor, then you could explore the possibility of trading in your Pixel 6 for some store credit, and then paying the difference for the Pixel 7 out of pocket. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts on Google's latest flagship? And are you thinking of buying the Pixel 7? Let us know in the comments down below. While you're down there, be sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we upload next. For all the latest and greatest in tech, be sure to visit us at androidauthority.com. Thanks again to CuriosityStream for sponsoring this video. I'm Harley Moranen, and I'll see you in the next one.